Good morning, everybody. Good morning uh, for those who are in Europe and for good afternoon for everyone who is in Asia right now. My name is Phạm Hoàng Hải, the Executive Director of the Italian Chamber of Commerce. And uh, welcome back again to another webinar organized by the Italian Chamber of Commerce, ICHAM. And uh, we are very glad that uh, we, are, we are very glad that uh, all our webinar organized uh, during these years uh, have always have a big number of followers of the participant. And uh, so it means that it's also proof clearly that there's a lot of uh, interest from the businessman of the entrepreneur and the company uh, onto the Vietnamese market and how to do business in Vietnam to look for more opportunity. And here we are uh, here I, as iCharm and other uh, partner of iCharm, uh, we are here to uh, try our best to provide more information, hopefully to be helpful for you, for your business and uh, more opportunity. As you already know that uh, the reason of the, the theme, the main theme of the webinar organized today is the, uh, we've been talking about the foreign invest company incorporation in Vietnam. And in the last decade, uh, more and more uh, foreign company does it put their eye on the Vietnamese company, uh, on the Vietnamese market, uh, because the Vietnamese market has becoming more and more profitable uh, for business, for many company. And also during the years, the necessity of setting up a new company fully operated in Vietnam in order to have more control of the business, of the situation uh, of how to do in business in Vietnam become more and more uh, urgent uh, for foreign company to do here. And that's the reason why uh, today we are very glad to uh, have with us the speaker of today, which, uh, which is a uh, speaker from Fidinam. Uh, Fidinam is also a company member of iCharm and a very brief introduction about to our speaker today. The first one is Alessandro Pedrinoni, which is the, the CEO and GM of Fidinam in, uh, uh, in APAC. And Ms. Uh, Tao Nguyen, um, the head of, of uh, legal corporate of Fidinam in Vietnam. And, uh, all to, um, and all together, we will speak about uh, how to uh, a brief, uh, pick, speak about the uh, EVFTA uh, and how it's, it will influence into setting up the company in Vietnam, how to uh, prepare for setting up a friend investment company, important notes, uh, EVFTA impact, and some practical uh, case. And then after that, we've been talking about uh, very briefly about the market entry services that we hopefully can provide for you, both from the Chamber of Commerce and also from Fidinam. And after that, uh, we've been talking about the Q&A, a very important part, as you already know. Uh, so please feel free to raise all the questions that you have on the, on the chat section during our presentation. Uh, and we'll try to answer to all of your uh, concern, question, or uh, further detail during the Q&A part. And uh, in order to help our staff to uh, easier to manage the, the registration, I would kindly ask all of us, as always, to uh, mute your microphone and also turn uh, your uh, name into the name and your company name. So in order to help us to easier to identify who is who. So uh, I'm not taking you any longer. I will uh, pass the floor to Mr. Alessandro uh, uh, Pedrinoni of Fidinam. A very brief uh, to, to introduction about Fidinam is a, a boutique um, consultancy group uh, set up in Switzerland back to 1960. And uh, they have many important clients across the world. Uh, their main business are in uh, tax advisory, corporate service, business consultancy, real estate consultancies. They have more than 16 offices uh, from Europe to uh, APAC. And uh, they also have one office in Vietnam uh, together with the office in Dubai, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, and in Sydney. So Mr. Uh, Alessandro, are you ready? Yes. Hi. Thank you, mm. Mr. Hai. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so thank you uh, for uh, uh, attending the webinar of today. Thank you, Mr. Hai and the ICHAM uh, in Vietnam for hosting this uh, webinar. And uh, good morning to all the attendees uh, connecting from Europe and good afternoon to uh, the attendees connecting uh, uh, from, uh, from Asia. Um, 
Okay, I will start to share my screen. Okay. Um, so, um, as Mr. High already mentioned briefly, uh, I will give a, a, a brief uh, uh, introduction to uh, just a moment. Yes, to feeding up services and our group, and then I will give the floor to to my colleague. Um, so, uh, very quickly, um, Fidinam is a, a group founded back in 1960, so we have more than 60 years of uh, experience in assisting uh, uh, companies and individuals and uh, investors in uh, different regions. Our main areas of uh, uh, expertise are in tax advisory, corporate services, business consultancy and uh, real estate consultancy. We have more than 250 professionals throughout the world, and we're present in 12 jurisdictions. In the Asia Pacific region, uh, we are present in uh, Hong Kong, in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, in Singapore, in Sydney, and soon uh, we will be present also in uh, uh, mainland China as well uh, as uh, in Melbourne. Um, Today, so I would like to focus on our services uh, in uh, Vietnam. So Fidinam Vietnam is a, a fully fledged Fidinam uh, entity providing uh, assistance to uh, investors to set up their presence in, uh, uh, in Vietnam and also assisting uh, uh, Vietnamese to invest uh, overseas. Uh, thanks to our uh, colleagues based in our Ho Chi Minh City office, we can uh, um, assist our clients in incorporating uh, uh, Vietnam entities. Um, so uh, it could be companies or other types of entities. Uh, and we can assist also our clients at every stage of the incorporation process uh, to obtain the relevant licensing, the post licensing services, as well as providing nominee services and other ad hoc management services. As uh, um, I mentioned before, so uh, Fidinam is a group, so can leverage of an extensive network of professionals and has many years of experience in uh, um, providing a tax advisory and international tax advisory particularly. So uh, being a boutique with this um, background and know-how, we can assist corporates and individuals in uh, cross-border tax matters in order to reach efficient and sustainable structure for their investments. Uh, we also provide uh, digital consulting uh, services. Uh, we partner with companies and uh, entrepreneurs in the digital transformation of their businesses, offering a, a, a wide range of solution and technology consulting aimed at uh, digitalization and optimization of uh, business management. Uh, of course, our set of services includes the local compliance in Vietnam, which means uh, uh, accounting and uh, tax filing services in Vietnam, as well as assisting the clients for the full set of services related to HR and employment, from uh, uh, the visa to, uh, to the working permits, as well as assisting for the uh, compulsory insurance contribution, drafting and reviewing labor contracts, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, because of this particular experience of, and, of Fidinam and history of Fidinam in assisting individuals, we also help families uh, in, to own uh, um, uh, their needs by providing well planning solutions, particularly focused on uh, uh, asset protections as well uh, as uh, citizenship and residency planning. So um, we are happy to work with our clients, both on their needs for their business, as well as their, for their private assets. In uh, Vietnam, our office in uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City has, uh, uh, can provide the full set of services uh, rendered by Fidina, which I just mentioned, thanks uh, to a team of professionals um, that cover different aspects uh, from the business consulting to the uh, corporate advisory uh, with my colleague, Ms. Tao, who will uh, speak in a moment, as well as uh, accounting and tax uh, uh, matters from uh, uh, my colleague, Ms. Fan. And so uh, we have um, a small team in Ho Chi Minh City, but is also, uh, this is an important aspect of Fidinam, well connected with the teams of Fidinam in the region, being our Singapore region, uh, Singapore office, sorry, our uh, Hong Kong office, or our offices uh, in, uh, in the other regions and in Europe particularly. 
so this uh, holistic approach and the boutique approach of Edenum to stay close to the clients and can allow us to uh, provide uh, um, practical solutions, flexible solutions and commitment that uh, particularly uh, SMEs uh, appreciate and uh, allow us also to assist uh, our clients to invest uh, in different countries in the region, as well as in dealing with uh, matters related to the mother company uh, in, eventually in another region or in Europe. Uh, so I don't want to take the other time from uh, my colleague, which is um, who will present uh, the, the main topic of today. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll leave the floor back to Mr. Ari. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, so um, I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Uh, Fung Tao, the Relationship Manager and Head of Corporate Advisory, who will uh, explain to us about the, the main theme of our webinar by today, which is a friend invest company incorporation in Vietnam. Um, thank you, Mr. Hai, and thank you, Alexandro, for the introduction. And hello, everybody. It is my pleasure to be here and to give you the presentation uh, from three topics, how to set up a foreign invested companies under the new regulation, the updates on the EVFTA, and lastly, for the practical case, to let you know our scope of services as well as how we can help. And first of all, I would like to go through the foreign invested company incorporation procedure. Uh, as you may know, when talking about foreign invested companies, we do have 100% foreign owned companies in a joint, a joint venture company. So far, according to the local regulation, as well as the applicable uh, international GST, there's few industries still need the local shareholders, such as a uh, uh, some part of transportation service, uh, advertising service, or um, custom clearance service. So if the foreign investor invests in this industry, uh, they need to partner with, uh, with a part local partner, and that's why a joint venture company is needed. Uh, regarding the company type uh, in Vietnam, we have private enterprise, partnership, limited liability company, and trust of company. Uh, in which the last two uh, company form being limited liability company and choice of company are the most common. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, the shareholder of these type of companies are responsible for uh, the tax as well as properties uh, obligation of the company to the extent of the capital amount they invest in the company. So uh, how about the legal procedure and timeline to have a foreign invested company incorporated in Vietnam? So I would say that um, the overall timeline for the incorporation will be around three months, including the time for the investor to prepare the required information and document. So regarding procedure, uh, the foreign investor will go through two main steps. Step one is apply for the uh, investment registration certificates. And following this step, an application for the enterprise registration certificates is required. Uh, the Vietnamese subsidiary company will be legally formed uh, as from the days of the enterprise registration certificate. Uh, however, for some special case, the legal position might be different with an additional step or might be shortened. So today, uh, we will uh, deliver you for two special case. The first case is for investment project subject to the investment policy approval or so-called uh, investment policy decision. Uh, this approval will be applied for the uh, foreign investment project involved in business having condition or in case the investor invest a giant capital to the project. So for this case, uh, the foreign investors are required to carry out a procedure to obtain the investment policy approval. This approval uh, might be issued either by the National Assembly or the Prime Minister or the Provincial People Committee, depends on the uh, investment scale as well as the target business. Uh, the second special case is applied for uh, the investment project for innovative startup. So this is the new regulations uh, stipulated by the law on enterprise 20, uh, 
the law on uh, investment 2020. So according to the new regulation, foreign investors setting up medium and small size innovative startup are not required to obtain the investment registration certificate, meaning that they can go straight to the application for the enterprise registration certificate to have the company set up. So uh, when setting up foreign investor company, what are the more important rules does the foreign investor need to pay attention? So today we will deliver you some important rules according to the new regulation on enterprise uh, law on investment, as well as the guiding legal document being decreed and circulated uh, adopted recently. And the first uh, note we would like to bring to you today is the list of restrictive and conditional business life. Uh, this is the first time the two lists, list of restricted sector and list of conditional business apply for foreign investor and foreign invested company uh, was uh, officially announced in the legal document being a uh, law on investment and the degree 21. Here we have two lists. The first list is for restricted uh, sector. According to this list, foreign investors are not allowed to invest in 20 business lines, uh, such as uh, press activity and gathering in any form, uh, temporary imports, foreign export of goods, or public photo study, and so on. You can find the full list in the degree 31. And uh, we also have the second list for the business line having conditional market access including uh, 59 sector. Investment condition might include the uh, foreign ownership limitation, investment form, uh, investor capacities, or scope, uh, the scope of investment implementation. These conditions will be checked in the local regulation and applicable international GSP. So uh, this can be understood that only sector are not in the coverage of the uh, these two lists are considered as open for foreign investors. And in this regard, we would like to bring to you one important note regarding the application of these two lists. Uh, these two lists will apply for foreign investors, sure. And also it can be up, it will apply for the foreign invested company already set up in Vietnam when this company open another company or purchase share uh, share in other uh, Vietnamese organization. If this foreign company have more than 50% of its chapter capital is held by foreign investor, or this company have more than 50% of its chapter capital held by the organization as stipulated in the point A, or this company have more than 50 of its chapter capital is held by foreign investor in the economic organization stipulated in point A. <clears throat> and the second important rule is regarding capital contribution. Uh, the new regulation uh, give uh, the time limit for capital contribution same as the formal uh, regulation. Uh, here, uh, the investor have 90 days as from the date of the enterprise registration to accomplish the capital contribution. Nevertheless, the new law excludes the time of transporting and importing access to be contributed as capital, as well as the time performing the procedure to transfer the ownership of access from the member to the company. And this new regulation really help uh, foreign other investors to avoid violating regulation on the time limit for capital contribution. And also uh, regarding capital contribution, uh, the investor must be must pay attention on the adjustment of capital in case any capital contributor fail to contribute or insufficiently contribute capital as committed. If the former regulation gave the investor 60 days to update the license, the new regulation shortened the timeline uh, to uh, 30 days. Accordingly, the company has 30 days. From the last day, uh, the tractor capital was due to be contributed in full to actual its capital contribution. Uh, 
uh, each actor capital. And also the capital contribution ratio of member if the company have more than one member according to the paid in capital amount. And the next uh, important note that we would like to bring here is for the legal representative. Similar to the former regulation, uh, a company in Vietnam may have one or more than one legal rep, and one of them must be a resident in Vietnam. And most importantly, right and obligation of each legal rep must be specified in the company chapter. However, the formal regulation doesn't have any regulation what will happen if the chapter capital do not, uh, if the company chapter do not have any provision reg regulating about the rights and obligation of the legal rep, uh, the new law on enterprise juries. Accordingly, the new regulation state that in the absence of the provision uh, regulating right and obligation of its legal rep in the company chapter. Its legal rep will have full authorities before any third party. And most important, importantly, all the legal representative will take joint responsibility for any damage caused to, uh, caused to the company according to the law. And here we have three notes for the legal representative here. Try obligation mean an obligation which must be performed by more than one person and which the obligees may request any one of the obliger to perform in its entirety and the assignment of right and obligation of legal rep will be have legal validation once it is written in the company chapter and lastly, a new regulation applied for the foreign investment company is uh, regarding uh, the, the, the LLC must have at least one legal representative being a person holding the position of the chairman uh, of the member council or the company president or the director or general director. And uh, we would like to move to the last important note that we would like to bring today is for investment incentive. Uh, the new law at its objective entitled to investment incentive in an effort to support a uh, startup SME in Vietnam as well as the company specialized in environmental protection industry. The government has already put in place incentive for them in hope uh, of providing condition and for strong and substantial development in the near future. And secondly, the new law adds this new form of uh, investment incentive. Beside the traditional investment incentive, such as a co uh, corporate income tax incentive, exemption from reduction of tax or land levy or land rent. And now we have another a new form of incentive being accelerated discrimination, increasing deductible expense upon calculation of the taxable income. This is very new uh, investment incentive given by the law on uh, investment. And I have just finished the part related to the, the incorporation procedure for a foreign investment company, as well as important news that the foreign investor need to pay attention and now I would like to move to the next one, the update on EBFTA. Uh, generally speaking, the EBFTA is a new generation FTA between Vietnam and European Union member state. This is comprehensive and high quality agreement which ensure balanced benefits for both Vietnam and the EU with consideration for the differences in development level between two sides. Uh, upon entering into force, the EBFTA is expected to be a huge boost to Vietnam export, helping to diversify markets and export, particularly for agriculture and aquatic products, as well as a Vietnamese product with competitive advantages. And among the major commitment regarding uh, tax elimination, reduction, rule on original or IP protection. So today we would like to just focus on the tax elimination and reduction, which received a lot of concern and interest 
from the foreign investor. So uh, the EVFTA is expect to promote strong growth of export for both sides by eliminating over 99% of tariff line and reducing non-tariff barrier. Uh, the EU will eliminate custom duty on 85.6% of tariff line when the agreement comes into effect. After seven years, the EU will eliminate enforced duty on 99.2% of tariff line. At the same time, Vietnam will eliminate custom duties of 49.5% of tariff when the agreement comes into effect. And in addition, uh, Vietnam will have a role of, of over 10 years or give referential treatment to EUs under the WTO tariff portal. So what are the impacts of EDFTAs on some key sector in Vietnam? And today we will deliver to you firstly for agriculture sector. Uh, because this uh, sector is predicted to benefit most from the EDFTA, because many Vietnamese products such as broken rice, grain product will enjoy its uh, zero percent take rate. Furthermore, the EU is committed to like take elimination for food and vegetable. Uh, in addition for fishery, the EU will cut about a half of tariff line and the remaining half will be abolished in five to seven year roadmap. Uh, export role of some agriculture is uh, anticipated to increase significantly by 2025 thanks to the EVFTA. And the knife industry is for pharmaceutical approximately half of EU imports will be duty free immediately and the rest will be exempted from a duty after seven years. Uh, as for the footwear industry, uh, according to the EVFTA, the EU will uh, commit to reduce tax to zero percent for 42.1 percent of Vietnam export turnover uh, when the agreement comes into effect. And after three years and seven years, this way will be uh, 73 2 and 100% respectively. That's why it is anticipated that Vietnam footwear export to the EU will increase uh, double by the 2025. For tech titles, uh, in garment industry, uh, according to the, this FTA, uh, within five years, the EU will eliminate tariff of 70.3 uh, of Vietnam export, and the remaining turnover will be eliminated after seven years. It is predicted that export turnover of tech title and garment industry to the EU will increase rapidly by about uh, 67% by 2025, compared to the scenario of a non-agreement. And lastly, for the logistics industry, uh, Vietnam will eliminate tariff on vehicle, machineries, and equipment for logistics activities from the EU. This uh, commitment really give the opportunity for local logistics firms to buy product for domestic production as a reasonable price uh, to save price, improve technologies, enhance our implementation capacity, and eventually reduce our sourcing survey. So uh, for the EV FTA benefits, it is obviously that um, the EV FTA is the most comprehensive an ambitious trade uh, and investment agreement that the EU have ever concluded with a developing country in Asia. It is the second FTA in the ASEAN region with EU after Singapore, and it will intensify uh, the bilateral relation between Vietnam and the EU. Uh, in principle, the EV FTA implies uh, increased competitiveness between EU and Vietnamese marketplaces, foreign projects uh, which may enjoy tariff advantage because uh, of the abolition uh, of export duty should present a serious competition for product. And lastly, through EVFTA, 
uh, EU investor will also have the opportunity to access the markets of country that have signed FTA with Vietnam with more preferential treatment. This agreement also have to promote relation between the EU and ASEAN country, in particular and ASEAN region in general, creating remits for the discussion uh, uh, on the uh, FTA between ASEAN and the EU in the future. So uh, that is the all the information regarding uh, EBFTA that we would like to bring to you today. And the last uh, topic is regarding a practical case uh, we would like to give you this afternoon. Uh, here we have a foreign investor being an Italian group exploring the possibility to reinforce its presence in Vietnam by adding a production center to be based in the proximities of exciting clients, allowing this client to stay closer to the referral market in C, as well as exporting product to the USA, avoiding uh, the potential threat of the US-China trade war. Uh, in this case, uh, the client engaged Fidina for a review of the feasibility of the temporary export import and transformation of the project, as well as the custom duty applicable when uh, export the transformed product to the EU, ASEAN country, China, and US, considering the applicable FTA. And following this request, we in a sick client to perform uh, in performing the, the, the licensing procedure to have the factory established. So uh, what are our scope of assistance and how we can help? Here, the uh, Vietnam team will provide the memorandum analyzing the custom duty and uh, VAT impact on import and export activity to and from the production side under the local regulation and applicable FTA, including EBFTA. And following the assistance, Vietnam have client to set up a factory uh, with the following support. Vietnam team will review the legal documentation of the uh, production size, such as uh, the certificate of land URI, certificate of factory ownership, construction permit, and other related documents. Uh, later on, we review the factory lease agreement, and afterwards, we apply and obtain the required license while dealing with the competent local authority. And once the factory is uh, in uh, operational status, we did not provide a professional to support uh, for the day-to-day -day business operation for the factory under the power of autonomies or instruction given by client. It's help client to manage uh, the project in Vietnam considering the, the traveling restriction due to the COVID-19. So um, I have just uh, finished with my part for the three topics. So uh, now I would like to leave the stage to Mr. Hai. So Mr. Hai, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tao. Thank you for, uh, and also thank you, Alessandro, for, for your uh, introduction. Obviously, obviously, we have uh, touched very, uh, let's say, very lightly on the argument uh, of all the audience here want to, uh, want to hear, and we want to further go more into detail into the, um, let's say, into how, how this uh, EBFTA uh, uh, free trade agreement can can influence into our business and how we can maximize the, and exploit it. So that's the reason why uh, I'd like to uh, arrive to the uh, to the part of the of the uh, uh, services that uh, both our chamber of commerce uh, provide and also uh, the FIDINAM provides. The first of all that uh, we want to. To, to, to arrive here is that um, when we're talking about EBFTA, we're talking about export, increasing the export level, both from the European side into Vietnam and both from, from the Vietnamese side into Europe. And uh, by the official date um, data, uh, at the end of 2020, Vietnam has become the biggest trade partner of uh, European Union uh, among all other uh, Asian country uh, in Southeast Asia. And also Vietnam is specifically can also be, uh, became already also the biggest trade partner with Italy among 
other Southeast Asia countries. So it's a very significant uh, data and number that uh, Vietnam and European Union has been trying to reach so far. Uh, getting back to the, to the market entry services um, and to export, we already know that um, uh, the, the biggest and the, uh, and the top prior priority of the uh, company, whether it's a Vietnamese producer or the European producer, is um, how can we look for a potential client, a potential business partner in Vietnam or in Europe? And that here where we are, because uh, as the Italian Chamber of Commerce, we have uh, been organizing for the last 12 years, um, the different type of uh, market research, um, potential client um, B2B meeting, and also trade mission. Uh, Tao, uh, uh, please go to the next slide, please. Um, and for the last, um, so every time when we receive a request from a European producer to look for a, a potential importer or distributor or agent or final client, it depends on the industry that you know. Uh, and our Chamber of Commerce always try to uh, look for a specific research on the type of product or services that the company uh, offer to the potential business partner. And and we have been operating since the, from the machinery, uh, from the technology until the consuming product. And for the last four years, we have been uh, uh, bringing it up into a next level. So, uh, because you know that the multilateral trade is very important, both for European side and also from Asian side. So since 2016, we have been organizing a series of B2B, intercontinental B2B platform uh, focused on the three industry. The first one is the uh, pharmacy made in Italy, the lifestyle made in Italy, and uh, the machinery, machinery made in Italy. Very simple. Um, for this initiative, uh, from one side, we bring a group of um, Italian producer or uh, European producer. Uh, in those three industry. So machinery, pharmacy, and lifestyle. Here is furniture, furniture, yes. And uh, from other sides, we bring the top biggest and most important buyer from all Asia to come to Vietnam. And in 48 hours, two days, uh, they will have full meeting, fully immersion with the uh, biggest and most important and uh, most potential client that they can have from all the Asia continent to come to Hanoi to do the B2B meeting. And it's very high, um, intense, it's very high uh, intensity of B2B meeting, but still the probability of doing business is also uh, cl closing a deal is very high. We also provide the, the, the services for the Vietnamese company who want to approach the Vietnamese market, the European market, especially when they want to export to, uh, to, to Europe and uh, also to, providing the services to going together with them, accompanying them during the, the journey to help them to improve both the quality, but also the regulation in order to comply to all the requirement of the, of the client from the European Union side. And um, next slide, please. Uh, yes, and... Um, uh, here we uh, would like also to, uh, to to make a brief video uh, uh, about the, the the machinery made in Italy that we organized. Uh, the last edition was in 2019 because uh, you know the the 2020 and 2021. Hopefully we can uh, uh, be able to organize this again uh, at the end of the year. Um, uh, and uh, one thing is very important that uh, we have launched. Um, we know that. We know that uh, the information is very important for the company or businessman who is not physically present in Vietnam. So that's the reason why we have launched on YouTube uh, uh, a channel specifically dedicated to the enterprises uh, that called uh, iCham Connected Channel. And in this video, uh, we will have three. We have three mini series of video. The first one is dedicated to the EVFTA where we uh, uh, cut into the 15 subsector of EVFTA. And uh, we explain in order, very simple, very short video, uh, in order to help the entrepreneur who work in that industry to understand how the industry work, 
from the machinery, pharmacy, uh, furniture, textile, food, F&B, uh, et cetera. So if you work in that uh, industry, uh, you can go on our, our iCharm Connected channel and click on the EVFTA mini series and you can find the video that, mm -hmm. that is suited for you uh, to provide the, the information for you. All the videos are in English and subtitled in Italian and also in Vietnamese. The second, the second uh, uh, mini series that we have launched is the Talk with the Expert. Uh, you know that for the company that want to approach the Vietnamese market, uh, it's a very complex market, let's say, and it's even more complex for those who have never done business before in Vietnam. So uh, we um, have prepared this kind of series of uh, interview from the um, of the top expert in Vietnam in many e e sector like from uh, intellectual property, human resources. Uh, importer uh, of different industry in order to uh, provide uh, to to make the overview the most uh, complete uh, and easy to understand view of the business of that industry in Vietnam. How does it work? What does it require? And in order to have you to do business better for that industry, what is your potential client is expected from you? So if you want to have more detail into this kind of, uh, of business, please click on our uh, YouTube channel, iCham Connected, and click on the uh, Talk with the Talk with Expert mini series. And we also launched a third uh, series on the RCEP. Uh, you know that is we're talking about the biggest and most uh, important by now, the free trade agreement. On, uh, on 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 the um, uh, RCEP, and here again, uh, also here we uh, split on the video of the trade relationship and how does the tra free trade agreement works between the relationship between Vietnam and all the countries that belong to the RCEP free trade agreement. So for example, Vietnam, Korea, Vietnam, Japan, uh, Vietnam, ASEAN, and so on and so forth. And uh, we believe that uh, with all of that, uh, we could uh, able to help you to provide uh, a better and uh, easier to understand because uh, we, we are aware that not all of us, uh, we are expert in our industry, but we are not uh, expert in other industries. So in order to, you know, have you to easy to understand and uh, grab the most, let's say, essentials of the, of the things, uh, check on our website and on, also on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, well, you can find the link on the chat section. And uh, here, um, uh, I don't know if uh, Alessandro and Mr. want to prov provide some more detail about the, the services that's provided by Fidinam for, for the potential client before we move to the Q&A part, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. I just I want to add maybe that our decision to be directly present in Vietnam is because we uh, realize this uh, um, opportunity for our clients. So we decided to open our Ho Chi Minh City office uh, because we wanted to uh, follow our clients investing in the country and uh, setting up their investments and then give continuity of our services by providing local compliance services with uh, a local team of professionals. Uh, I, uh, I agree with you, Vietnam represents a huge opportunity. Um, the country has been growing uh, uh, very fast and has a very uh, interesting positioning considering uh, the proximity to China, considering uh, uh, the participation of the Asian uh, countries as well as the free trade agreement with the European Union. Uh, so this gives uh, Vietnam a combination of competitive factors that uh, I believe can be very attractive for uh, uh, foreign investors. Um, now, we are living in the COVID-19 years, so we understand the difficulties for new investors to set up uh, in, uh, in a foreign country, but I also believe that uh, uh, right, the world is set into the direction of reopening, and I believe that Vietnam is positioned to um, give uh, uh, investors uh, an opportunity to, to leverage to a fast growing economy, to connect to uh, a, a super region where uh, uh, also other countries such as Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, the, the proximity to China, Singapore. So Vietnam can really be a gateway to, to further develop a commercial presence and also 
product a production uh, close to to the market as per the example of uh, of my colleague Tao. Uh, so um, Fidinam can help the client to navigate this complexity uh, and uh, to uh, allow the client to focus on the business opportunity while we take care of the complexity of the regulations and we help uh, to set up an effective structure in order to uh, maximize the return for the investor. Yes. Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, and I'd like to right now to move uh, to the Q and A. Uh, we have we have received a list of questions, uh, purely raised by the registered uh, participant. But please, if any of you of the uh, audience today want to raise any question, please kindly uh, type your question into the chat box. And our our personnel will uh, will forward them to to the speaker. So the the first question uh, that we receive is the I believe is the address to Fidinam. Uh, the ties between uh, U, European Union and Vietnam establishing presence in Vietnam. I'm I'm not sure if the the question is very clear. Uh, the ties between you. European Union and Vietnam, establishing presence in Vietnam. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not sure if any, if, uh, if, if the people or the person who raised this question can, can be a little bit more specified, or maybe we can uh, move to the next one in the meantime where, where they want to be more, more specifically explained. Okay, uh, Alessandro, I have a question for you. Uh, can you talk about the advantage and disadvantage of foreign investor when investing in Vietnam at the moment? Okay, thank you, nice. Ali. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as I briefly anticipated, I believe Vietnam is very well positioned uh, in the region, uh, thanks to a fast growing economy, uh, thanks to a very uh, young and dynamic population. And I think this is an important factor to highlight, for instance, compared to China, where there are some issues related to the fast aging population uh, in, in opposition to, in the contrary, Vietnam is, is, is quite attractive in this regard, also in terms of adoption of uh, digital technologies. So I think Vietnam represents a very interesting, a very interesting market. Um, obviously, on also the lower cost of productions that uh, um, can can uh, uh, allow Vietnam to be an alternative uh, to China for uh, 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 manufacturing products, uh, and uh, as uh, my colleague Tao also mentioned, to manufacture and then sell product, for instance, to the U.S., uh, avoiding any threats given by the uh, China-U.S. Uh, uh, trade war. Um, also, uh, I would say that uh, the um, fast-growing uh, middle class in Vietnam is an interesting element uh, for companies that are willing to sell their products and their services. Um, I think for particularly for the Italian company, I believe that for a manufacturer of uh, machineries and uh, process equipment, and all the technologies for transformation of products. I think Vietnam is, is a very interesting market right now. Uh, of course, there are other uh, industry sectors that uh, are uh, growing and then fast, and then they are quite attractive for uh, foreign direct investments, such as uh, textile, of course, electronics, uh, food and beverage, design, furniture, plastic materials, uh, IT and telecommunications. So um, I think, uh, for uh, for companies willing to uh, get the opportunity, and Vietnam uh, um, can provide, uh, let's say, uh, an upside for their development of their business. Um, and uh, um, I think it's important to highlight that Vietnam is also um, uh, focused on simplifying the regulation and to make the country uh, simpler for uh, uh, foreign investors. Uh, um, so. Um, I will say in terms of difficulties for, uh, uh, for potential investors to interested in Vietnam, of course, the, the current situation, uh, not being able to travel represent a barrier to, to 
uh, you know, because we every investor, of course, wants to, to see and to visit the country. And so this is a, a, a limitation for now, uh, as well as a limitation is given by uh, sometimes the quite a complex regulation that is uh, um, can be um, a barrier for certain clients. So I think that's why it's important for uh, for um, service providers and advisors like feeding them to assist the clients in uh, navigate this complexity. Um, so um, I would say that uh, some investors may also be concerned about uh, how to move uh, the uh, money out of your dam, which is also a question that we often receive from uh, our clients. And, and in this regard, I would say there are some concern related to the fact that uh, Vietnam is a, is a socialist country, uh, but uh, uh, as well as, uh, you know, what uh, we compare it to, to, to China, for instance, or also in Vietnam is, is possible. Uh, the, we just need to follow the rules and the requirements of the Vietnamese law, and uh, uh, we can assist the clients uh, not only to invest, but also to uh, distribute the, 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 the dividends and the proceedings of their investments uh, in uh, outside Vietnam. So, um, yeah, I hope this answers your question, Mr. Hai. Yes, yes, thank you, uh, Alessandro. And we have received the next question is the uh, opportunity for foreign pharma investor. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to answer for this question because um, uh, as you know that uh, uh, Vietnam is right now, uh, 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 when we're talking about the Vietnamese market, we're talking about uh, 97 billion, million of uh, people markets. So, and Vietnam within uh, 2030 will become, uh, according to many, many uh, economists and experts uh, predict, Vietnam will become the biggest middle class in Southeast Asia. Um, so oh, pharmaceutical uh, is the extremely potential business sector for, 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 for the investor, because uh, as you know that when the business, the business is growing, when the economy is growing, uh, when the, um, uh, uh, the purchasing power is growing, the pharma uh, industry will also becoming more and more diversified and have more space, more room, uh, more opportunity for the, the uh, specific product that normally is not presented for uh, for the uh, for the less uh, let's say uh, less growing uh, uh, economy market uh, industry and um, so that's the reason why in the last decade uh, many many uh, multinational group has has invested in vietnam in pharmaceutical industry and in the pharmaceutical industry is uh, among the the top and fast fastest growing uh, sector of, of um, uh, Vietnamese economy. Vietnam has also joined the high-end free trade agreement like EVFTA or UK VFTA or the RCEP or also CPTPP that's uh, being negotiated right now. And all of these are, are very uh, require a high level of uh, compliance according to the manufacturing, uh, the documentation certification uh, and other quality of the product. Uh, and among that, uh, pharmaceutical industry is the, the most uh, 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 exploit benefit from uh, from from those uh, free trade agreement. So, um, if uh, any of you want or interested or can find the potential opportunity to invest in pharmaceutical uh, industry in Vietnam, please go ahead because I'm sure that it will worth uh, uh, every single dollar that that you invest in Vietnam. Uh, I don't know if Alessandro or from Fidinam want to uh, add something or we can move to the next one. Just a couple of words, Mr. I think uh, I completely agree with your, your view in, uh, in uh, sizing this, uh, this opportunity. And uh, I believe it's quite a predictable process that also it's, 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 a, uh, it's mm, uh, an interesting assumption for potential investors in the industry because uh, the Vietnamese society is set for a path of uh, developing the middle class to becoming more sophisticated in consumption of goods and services and healthcare definitely is at the, at the center of this development. So I believe for uh, investors in the pharmaceutical industry, definitely Vietnam is a place uh, to look at. Thank you. Yes, Alex, I have a question for you. The next question is for you. Um, 
uh, technically we have uh, the first one is, is Fidinam can help to arrange the pharmaceutical license from health authority in Hong Kong. We have already registered company in Hong Kong and rep office in Vietnam. We have business registration certificate, but still finding option to get wholesale dealer licenses in Hong Kong from health department. And, uh, and the second question is, uh, can a 100% FDI in Vietnam, which provide processing services in government and foodware sector can be entitled to enjoy uh, EVFDA benefit to product originate from Vietnam? regarding import and export? Okay, so one question for time. Uh, regarding the question about Hong Kong, uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Fidinam has uh, uh, a team focused on uh, uh, licensing services. So we will be happy to assist uh, uh, this client. So I invite whoever made the question to contact me and I will be happy to follow up on this request. Regarding the second question, I will leave it to my colleague, uh, uh, Ms. Tao. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hai, for the questions. Uh, regarding the question whether or not 100% FDI in Vietnam uh, providing processing service can be entitled to enjoy EVFTA's benefit. So my answer is would be possible, provided that uh, the product to be manufacturer to be processed in Vietnam have a sufficient uh, local or region value according to the, uh, the, the regulation provided in the FTA. Uh, this is quite similar to this practical case that I have just presented to you. We do did have our client to investigate the condition to be for the, the product is considered as made in Vietnam. So uh, in this regards, uh, we can have our client to have an analysis uh, about the regulation, about the tech incentive, and about the uh, regulation, how the project process is considered as would made in Vietnam to be entitled to uh, the uh, incentive given by the FDA. Yes, thank you, Tao. Thank you. Uh, we have the next question is, um, can you talk about the benefits of EVFTA for marble export to Europe? Uh, yes, we have, um, um, we'd like to answer this question and uh, I'd like to invite uh, my colleague, uh, Marco Piscitelli to have the audience to answer to this question. Yes, thank Go you, back. hi. Um, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marco Tredanalis uh, at iChamp. Sorry for the lighting, that's the best I could do today. So um, uh, in order to answer the question, yes, the EVFTA also affects marble in two different ways. When it comes to the EU custom, to export marble is now easier. And because marble in worked or monumental, uh, or monumental building stone became duty-free from the entering force of the agreement, so from the August the 1st of 2020, while marble and travertine are already duty-free for the EU custom. When it comes to exporting to Vietnam, however, it is a bit different because marble's, marble slates, whether trimmed or not, are already duty-free, while tiles, cubes, and colored marble will be duty-free in 16 years from a base tariff of 30%. So at the end of this 15, 16 years, sorry, the base tariff will be zero, so there will be a minus 2% reduction every year. I hope it's been clear with you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Marco. And uh, the next question is for the uh, Fidinam. Uh, can a service company's access preferential, uh, preferential policy for locally hired personnel? Um, actually, uh, thank you for the, the questions. Uh, I would like to answer that uh, there is no discrimination in terms of hiring local staff among the company. Uh, it is to say that a foreign investing company is entitled to recruit local employees based on its demand. Yes, that is my question, uh, my answer, Mr. Han. Yes, uh, thank you, Tao. Um, uh, we have a, a question from Mr. Wesley. 
but I would like to ask you, uh, the, can an EPE company sell product to domestic market? Can you uh, a little bit more specify what you mean by EPE? Mr. Wesley, if you want, you can uh, turn on the microphone. Mr. Wesley, is this? Uh, Mr. Heist, EPE company means uh, 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 export processing enterprise. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ms. Tao, would you like to answer this question? Uh, yes, thank, uh, thank you for the questions uh, regarding this concern. We received a lot of similar questions for in this regards already. Uh, for EPE, com EPE company, is a company specialized in the production and export the product overseas to get the tech incentive according to the regulation. However, until now, there's no uh, regulation uh, um, uh, prohibited from the EPE to sell product to the domestic uh, uh, markets. Previously, there are some draft for the regulation to set a threshold of percentage of product to be sell by the EPA to the local regulation, but these draft were not adopted by the government. So, uh, so, so far, there's no regulation restricted uh, for this uh, uh, operation. However, uh, we will be happy to have further investigation in this case, and we can reverse to our audience uh, via email separately. For this question. Yes, Ms. Tao, uh, uh, we have also the next question is for uh, is for Fidinam. Uh, can, uh, can you explain the registration process of foreign trading company in Vietnam? Yes, um, for the, the registration process uh, to set up foreign trading companies uh, for incorporation, uh, it will be two step as we already presented in the slide previously. Firstly, is applied for the investment registration certificates. And following these certificates, we will apply for the enterprise registration certificates. And the company will be legally formed as from the days of the enterprise registration certificates. However, if, if the, the retail industry is included in the trading activity, the business license issued by the Department of Trade and Industry will be required. And also, if uh, the, uh, the, the company in Vietnam sells its wood via the e-commerce website, so it is required to inform to the ministries of uh, uh, trade and um, industry with the establishments of the e-commerce website. And I would say that it really depends on what kind of route to be traded. Uh, it will maybe uh, ask for additional license. So just for uh, your general information about the incorporation uh, uh, step. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, have we, is any of the audience want to raise uh, some other question to, to our speaker? Anything that regarding your business or what you might have with the, your business with Vietnamese market, trading, investment, EVFTA, UKVFTA? Yes, we have the next one is the, uh, if we set up, uh, we have the next question is, if we set up a 100% FDI company in the IT industry in Vietnam, do we need to register our office uh, in one of the high-tech zone to receive the benefit from the government? Uh, yes, uh, Fidinam? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the questions for uh, IT industry. Is, is not required to set up a company in high tech zone to receive the, the benefit, to receive the investment incentive because the uh, software production itself can receive the investment incentive regardless of uh, the company location. So it is to say that it's not required to invest in the high tech zone to get uh, the investment incentive. Great. 
Any other question, please? If you want, you can uh, also turn on the, the microphone. Uh, yes. We also have the second question from Mr. Wesley. Will there be any impact to Vietnam when the, well, minimum global tax rate is implemented? Uh, well, uh, Alessandro, you, you have any comment on this? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, let me say that uh, if uh, the minimal global tax rate will be implemented, I think that other jurisdictions than uh, Vietnam uh, may be more worried considering the, what is the, the tax framework in Vietnam. So I think that policy is more focused on targeting um, tax haven or where the, the, the taxation is uh, allowing multinational companies basically not to pay any taxes for their global operations. So I will say that this is not a concern for Vietnam. Yes, I completely agree with uh, Alessandro because uh, obviously it's, uh, this one is uh, specifically target for the multinational company that uh, operates an industry in, in cross country. And, and, and it's going to take, uh, personally, I, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, but personally, I, I believe that it's going to take quite a while before is fully implemented and get uh, approval from all the joint state to, to, to on this policy, but still is not directly a, a influence on, on, the, on the Vietnamese market. So yeah, that's, uh, yes. And um, the next question, please. Does anyone have the next question? Please feel free to turn on the microphone and, and raise your question. Well, um, if we don't have any uh, further questions, so uh, I'd like to... Um, uh, to close our webinar here today. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you again uh, to all the audience, to all the participants to, to join uh, the webinar. And uh, we are very, very glad to have you uh, here with us again. And we are very looking forward to have you with us on our next webinar organizing in the, in the coming weeks. And we also uh, like to give a big thanks to, uh, Mr., to Alessandro and also to Mr. Tu and Mr. Tao to, uh, to join with us today and be uh, such a wonderful speaker to share with us their experience and knowledge and uh, re reply to many questions to, to the audience. And um, if uh, any of you want to, would like to have the further uh, directly contact with iCharm, whether both iCharm or with Fidinam uh, regarding your business, please feel free to uh, have a look at the Screen and uh, write directly to uh, to us or to Fidinam. We'll try to reply to all the questions that uh, uh, you want to, to ask us and very looking forward to support you with your business in Vietnam or in Italy or also elsewhere. And uh, uh, Alessandro and Ms. Tao and Mr. Tu, would you like to share some farewell with the audience today? I just would like to take this opportunity to thank you everyone for attending this webinar, to thank uh, you, Mr. Hai and the iCham for hosting uh, this webinar with us. And uh, so we are uh, um, available for any questions or follow up. And uh, so please feel free to contact us uh, and uh, we will be happy to share uh, our uh, um, uh, information uh, regarding your potential investments in uh, in Vietnam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, see you at our next webinar. Thank you very much. Bye bye.